Hey everybody, it's Nick. Uh, for today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at adding connections to our catenary vault uh, model. Uh, and I kind of go interchangeably between canopy and uh, vault, but you know, it's the model that we've been working on. So you can see the, the, the vault model you've got here. These green pieces are where you're going to laser cut and then use uh, zip ties to um, make these attachments. And uh, I think I talked to you guys earlier about this. I, in early design, I thought I could get away with just having a one um, one zip tie across the center line of each. But um, in talking to some folks, I think it's gonna be better to make these a hinge rather than a, kind of a, a like a pin connection. Um, and so it, it is gonna take more, a little bit more work, a little bit more zip ties, but I think it's gonna be more stable. So so that's what we got here. And um, uh, but yeah, so. So the the code we're gonna be working on today, the script is gonna is gonna basically uh, like align these these uh these these different clips in a plane, so that we can get a zip tie across them. And it's a little bit tricky. Uh, so what I'm actually gonna do for you guys is put up a script on Canvas, um, and you can just kind of follow along with it. Uh, you don't necessarily have to uh, to actually build the script. There's a lot of data structures and things that can get kind of tricky. Um, I'd rather just have you guys know the principles. We're still looking at this idea of like um, managing planes and distributing geometry across the planes of a surface. Uh, and, and I think that's all relevant. And what you're, what you're gonna end up with uh, are your curves. You have your outline curves and then you're gonna have these, these um, curves for your connectors, for your zip ties. And uh, just be careful like when you're doing this, like uh, I would look at your zip ties and figure out like what dimensions you have for them. Also note that, you know, as you're making these pieces, you know, some of them are not going to maybe work so well. Uh, you might have to do some editing. You're gonna have to look at the model and see where there are places, you know, where the, you're in trouble. But, but also note that on some of these parts, you know, these aren't connected to anything. You could go ahead and get rid of those and get rid of these here. You know, anything that's on the outside, you know, you can get rid of all these here. Um, it'd be pretty difficult to build the intelligence into the script. Uh, I would just assume, you know, go ahead and just have someone in your group go ahead and get this file cleaned up once you've once you've baked it and everything and 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 actually got the numbering and everything in there. Um, I think that's the way to do it. If you were if you're really going to build this, you probably need some kind of um, joint or something here, and you may even benefit from like some hot glue on the underside just to kind of get these things uh, kind of you know, like in line with each other. Um, that's kind of what you're gonna what you're gonna learn. You know, when you uh, when you actually fabricate this thing. So just you know, take notes on that. Bear all that in mind as as you guys go. None of this stuff is like perfect, uh, but I I do think it's interesting to see how you can actually create these kinds of connections here. So right away, um, another thing I want to mention too is um, before you get going on the script, go ahead and get your vault from the other model. Go ahead and bake it. Scale it down to your envelope, you know, your kind of 18 um, inch by 18 inch kind of envelope here, right? Roughly, that's kind of what I've got. And then make sure that you change your, your unit settings. Just right click that, go to inches. Go ahead and let it scale the model. Um, that stuff's going to be really important. Uh, so you, be, before you get working on this, make sure that you're working in inches scale. Make sure everything's right. Um, Make sure your units are right, uh, because when you start to offset some things and when you start to work with um, the dimensions of the zip ties, you've got to have that right. Um, I would actually go ahead and restart Grasshopper as well. I would shut down Rhino and open up the file again, because these sliders are going to be calibrated to the system units. And I sometimes they don't quite uh, work um, with the proper scale. And so just to be really, really careful about that. You can see these don't say inches, right? But rest assured, you know, well, actually in this case, these are these are parameters, sorry. Um, this would be inches, right? So it's like 0.1 inches. So just make sure that you've got that uh, figured out before you do all this. You can't, going back and scaling everything at this point is gonna give you a lot of trouble. So like once you've kind of figured out this model and everything, um, you know, I would, I would start with your parts from there, um, and and if you have to rebuild the cut sheet, that's that's not that that's not that hard to do. Um, I don't think I did that previously, but you know when you're when you're making this, go ahead. You know you got to have your inches so that that fits the laser cutter. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is you know you've got your 
And I'm going to go ahead, actually, as I do this, I'm going to show everything. Um, I'll turn these off. My cut sheet right now is pretty arbitrary, and actually yours should be too. Uh, I'll talk about that later, so don't don't worry about that too much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn off pretty much everything. Okay, so the first thing you do is you got your surface. Remember, you're going to bake it, and it's in inches. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this point. I don't need that right now. So go ahead and select everything. You're going to have your surface parameter. And again, you're going to probably be using the script I gave you, unless you want to build it, which I think is a really good idea. Go ahead and say set surface, or sorry, set multiple surfaces. That's going to put all that stuff into the surface container. And then you're going to do an explode B-Rep. Okay. What we're going to be doing here is we're, 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 we're trying to uh, put, place a, a frame um, alongside of all these edges here. And what a frame is, this is a perpendicular frame. And it's basically something that stands like straight up and down, you know, on axis. And what that does is it allows us to put something, I'll just show you, right? All these things are perpendicular to it. Um, and that's really, really handy. Okay. So on those, on those perpendicular frames, um, that's, that's where we're going to start to work with our, with our, with our tabs. So in order to get that though, we've got to get access to the edges of, of each of these uh, services. And a BREP, again, is just a boundary representation. Uh, in this case, you could consider it kind of analogous to a surface. Um, so a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is going to be using the, the edges. Um, and then what we're going to do those, I'm going to put those into a curve container. And then right click and say simplify and reparameterize. I'm going to keep using simplify just to make the data structure simple. Um, you'll see that here it starts off and it's got a bunch of parentheses and whatever. And, and then each each edge, uh, sorry, each uh, face has three edges because they're triangles. And what you end up with is just a container here with we've got 57 uh, services, each with three edges. Um, the parameter comes in here because when you work with edge frames. You take in a curve and a parameter, and a parameter uh, basically just means like like where on the curve do you want to put a frame? Um, and in order to make sure that all the curves, so ideally what you want, if I want to put a, a I'll go all the way back here. What I want when I'm done is I want to put a fastener at one quarter of the distance uh, from each edge. So that would be one quarter along the edge of this curve and three quarters along the edge of this curve and one quarter on this curve and three quarters on this curve right and um that just gives me uh that's just going to make things a lot a lot simpler right um i made these parametric but it actually doesn't work out to to adjust them um because you see that they actually misalign with each other and these need to be in the same position if these are off then your joints aren't going to be aren't going to be right so these have to basically be the same distance in both directions. Um, and again, I wouldn't expect you to, to necessarily like figure that out on your own, but that's, but that's how this hinge is going to work here. Um, so I've got a set of panels at uh, one quarter and a set of panels at uh, one quarter in the other direction, right? Or 0.75. And you can see that's where these are going to be positioned. And if your panels don't look like mine, go to display go to preview pl plane size and I made mine one. The plane size uh, doesn't scale automatically. So we made those planes and we don't we don't have these these tabs yet. like that's a ways off here as you can see, but that's where we're gonna go with this. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make circles and I'm only gonna show the one um, so I've, you can see here I've got actually a whole bank here that's the 0.25 connectors. And a whole bank here that's 0.75. I'm going to keep going with the 0.25. All this is down here is this all copied with the 0.75 attached. I could make this work with the data structures, but it'd be even more complicated. This, believe it or not, is actually more clear uh, just for the purposes of teaching and probably for the purposes of debugging. Like, honestly, um, you'll see in a moment. So, the way this works is I got these circles. And I have this component that is a BREP curve intersection. And there's all kinds of intersections that you can, you can do. And basically it's like kind of like a, like a binder clip 
Oh, sorry. Or like an earring or something. And I'm using it. So I, I take this thing and um, I, I place it on the plane, right? Along that curve. And because it's perpendicular to it, where it intersects this um, is actually going to give me that offset. And if I look at it in both directions, like so where, where it intersects here and where it intersects uh, here, it's actually going to give me an offset across two planes. It's kind of a trick, okay? Um, it's It would be very difficult, actually, if I offset this curve and I offset this curve, they're actually different uh, scale from each other. They're a different length. And so I couldn't get the parameter on that curve. I couldn't mathematically find the same location. It would be very, very difficult. But if I just take, like, an imaginary circle and I measure where it hits both of them, uh, the radius of that circle is actually going to give me a basis for positioning those rectangles. All right. So again, that's something that actually I had to figure out experimentally uh, because I tried to do it the other way by offsetting and I realized that they actually started to get pulled apart. So this is my kind of um, <clears throat> geometric trick, uh, trick. But again, like these will work with a lot of different different things okay i'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now so um what do i what do i do with that well um remember i want to put a um i want to put a plane on each of these uh points and uh and again the reason why this is reversed is the other thing is that the curves are drawn in different directions so these are all the 0.25s and then the 0.75s will actually be the opposite sides of this so that's that's why you're only seeing one intersection along that uh, on that circle and in fact just to demonstrate you know here's the other circles and here are the other intersections okay so that's that's what we're missing uh, we're gonna so in order to draw something we need to actually draw a rectangle that's on the plane right we talked about this in other videos so every um, triangle describes a plane it's three surfaces and in order to find those uh, planes, which are interchangeably known as frames when they're on a surface. I use the old uh, script pattern that I've shown you before. I find the, the I take the, the face of each b ramp and I'm going to find the center point, and then I'm going to find the closest point on that surface with that center point, and then I'm then going to evaluate the surface at that closest point on the surface right evaluate the frame and what I'll get is the plane of each frame okay and uh, and that's easier than opening up the data structure and drawing a plane with the three points it's just just terrible so um, but that plane is not on those points so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, take that and I take all the points and I take all these frames and basically I'm going to change the origin of the plane to be those points okay let me hide these real quick okay just to demonstrate what i'm actually doing there okay you can see all those things okay what's all what's this thing and what's all that that's that data structure stuff i'm talking about so like briefly i'm taking in all the uh the um uh, uh faces of the of this thing like all the services it's made out of but i've got like 174 curves right i actually end up with three three curves for each so three circles one for each of the uh, um, um, of the lines or of the edges of the face but i've got 57 things and so what i end up with is this is a structure you can see here it counts 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. So those are each face and each um, edge. But that's not the structure that I can use when I want to talk to my uh, frames. So I do this, uh, what's called a path mapper. And I just tell it, okay, so take the structure AB, so the way this is, and just, and just compress that to A. So you can see A is the first one, B is the second one. And what you end up with is the same structure so you just basically transform it and that is that is well beyond what 
I usually teach, but it's just for in this to get this to work. In this case, it's what you have to do. Um, but uh, it might be something we cover later. But that's so just making the data structures match gets me all the planes in the same in the same place. Okay, but that doesn't work though. Like if I if I just drew, let's see here. Let me if I can do this. If I just drew. Uh, okay, turn preview on. Yeah. If I just drew the rectangles on those things, most of them are gonna are not gonna line up. You can you can hopefully see that. Let me turn these planes off here. Okay. Some of them do. Some of them we get lucky. Some of them we halfway do, but these but these get well and actually that's because the other ones are um, down here. So um, but anyway, so look at the alignment of these things. They they wouldn't be off. What I need to do is actually I need to rotate them so the plane is in the right place, but it's not rotated correctly. Okay. So what I need to do is actually rotate it. Well fortunately, if you just think about we have this component that's called um, align plane and it uses a guide vector. If we treat each of these lines like it's a vector, I right, just you can say, okay, this guy here that's 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 at an angle, be more like this line, right? Or like this this one here that's off angle, be more like this line. And so what we can do is we go back to the curves and we make a vector. We saw this in another video. So you just take the start and the end point of that line, make a vector, plug your plane in with that vector. And what you're going to end up with is a plane that's lined up. And then if I take that frame and I plug it in to the rectangle, you're going to get what's right. You're going to get those to line up. And the rectangle, you know, we've hopefully seen before, but basically rectangles are drawn kind of funny. Um, they have an XY domain that actually draws from the corner. So if you want a... Um, and actually, I should I should have designed this better here. So if you want if you want a rectangle in this case, actually that's that's 0.3 wide. You actually need uh, to to have a domain of 0.15 to negative 0.15. Um, and in order to do that, I have a construct domain component, and I say take 0.15, and then I go in and I set the expression negative x, and then I plug that in for x, copy that plug that in for y and that's what I've got but actually what I what I what I probably um, need to do in order to make this actually because what you would expect is for this to be the dimension 0.15 and the dimension to be 0 0.03 but that is actually not the case that's actually that's actually half of what they are so um, what I'm going to do is just change the script to be x divided by 2 and change this script to be, I think I got this right here, and change the script to be x divided by 2. Which I probably need to double it, as a matter of fact. Oh, my math is way off here. Hang on a bit. Uh, let's see, 0.15, right, 0.75. I think I need 2. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's right. So half, and then we'll do negative uh, half and half, yep, and negative x divided by 2. And the reason why I do that, and, and I and I change this all, is actually because um, what I want these to be is double this. So 0.3 and 0.06. There we go. Oof. Let's see here. Okay, zero three to zero three points. Okay, so at least those at least those match up. Okay, but then what I ended up doing, yeah. So these are broken now, so I just have to change these again. Sorry, folks. But it's better when you're programming these things or you're using them with other people. You really want to make sure that things behave the way you expect. So, like, if you were to dial in those dimensions, you know based on that slider you know that you've got here um you would think that it's 1.50 but what you what you, uh sorry you, yeah that's what you think the dimension was but what you really wanted was 0 0.3 that's 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 what you see here is 0 0.3 okay and 0 0.6 but before i would because of because this was actually from 0.15 to uh negative 15 
Uh, we weren't actually getting the right dimension. Okay, so I'll fix that in the code. My bad. Okay. So yeah, you want these to be what they are. And the way I have my code set up, I just went ahead and connected these down here. I, they need to be the same. There's no, there's no reason why they're not the same dimension. And the same thing here with the uh, radius of the circle, which is actually, we should actually rename this too. So just like um, offset. Right. So that's that's what that is. It's good to call things what they are. Um, I can always do better with that. So you make the rectangles, and then at that point, you know, you can go ahead and put them um, onto the cut sheet. And the way you do that is like what we did before. So like in this script, I go all, you know, all the way back here to my curves. That curve gets put into the geometry component of a, I mean, the geometry input of a, um, um, of like an orient component. You have orient, okay? And remember we make the cut sheet, the old pattern, we have a surface. We use isotrim, divide domain, find the center point, make planes on all the center points, give you a better view here, right? And that is our final plane. And the base plane for our outside curves, right, is all the way back here. When we found the surface frames, like the surface planes, right, that's what this F here is. That's the individual plane of each of each um, surface face. And you got to watch that data structure. So look what's coming in here. We've got that structure that we've seen before, that, that 0, 57, n equal 3. Those are the faces, right? There's 57 containers, sorry, 58, counts at zero, each with three uh, uh, three edge curves. So what we need is we need we need there to be 58 planes, you know, and at least 58 final planes. Remember, anything in excess of 58, in this case, you know, we've got probably an extra six planes. It's just going to repeat that shape. You can go ahead and like delete those. There's no sense in messing with the data structure at this point. Just go ahead and bake these and just get rid of the ones you don't need. Okay. And then the other curves are the um, are the rectangles. So just pipe your right. So I just go ahead and copy paste this here. Pipe in these rectangles. Make another copy. Pipe in these rectangles. Right. And you can see you can see how that works. So that's how you get your three batches of curves out of this. Okay, and you know this talks to the other kinds of videos, but <clears throat> the things you gotta watch out for again, when you play with your offset here in your circles, just make sure that you leave yourself enough material, especially if you're using something that like like a chipboard or something. The um, the zip ties are gonna pinch this, and if you don't have enough material, it might actually break through. Um, even if you use acrylic, I would I would I would give yourself a pretty healthy margin. In this case, again, it's the, this isn't this is the center of it so the offset is 0.1 inches and then probably half of half of this so just kind of watch this and uh, if you need to go ahead and scale off of this remember this is parametric so like if you need to change it before you you know uh, before you actually laser cut it it's pretty trivial okay but go ahead and go ahead and look at that be very careful about how you do that um the I would not change these uh, for reasons that I've kind of explained. Like it's gonna they're gonna shift and they're not gonna align with each other. Um, and then let's see the last thing would be yeah just make sure look at buy your zip ties at a time measure them you know make sure that they're gonna fit. Fortunately with the laser there's not a ton of material shrinkage but I would give yourself a little bit of little bit of fudge a little bit of extra just to be. Uh, just to be safe, um, especially across this axis. Like I, I make sure you got a little bit of room, but so that you got a tighter connection here. Um, here, I would try to keep it as accurate as you can because you, you don't want a lot of shifting in that. So go ahead and get those zip ties and measure them. Remember, you're going to need a few. And in fact, I mean, if you want to actually figure out like how many you need, uh, go ahead and drop a panel, go and drop a list length. And uh, pipe these in, and then we gotta flatten this because we're gonna look at. Oops. Here, uh, let's see here. Let's do mass addition. Uh, 
there you go. That just takes a list of numbers and adds them together. Okay, so 100, 174. I guess you can kind of get that from here too. So 174 values times two, right? So we're talking about 340, give or take. Also noting that you're going to be removing some of these that you don't need, right? But that gives you that gives you a rough estimate when you're shopping for materials. You know, do you need a bag of 400? Do you need a bag of 800? Um, but that'll that'll get you going. So anyway. Hope this was interesting. You know, again, this is like a really great uh, architectural problem, you know, uh, and also like a um, sort of like a geometry problem of how you get these things to align across different planes. Um, uh, this is the most efficient way I found doing it. You wouldn't really want to do something with like a Boolean, you know, like if you made a ring or something like that. Booleans are really computationally expensive, are not parametric. Um, when you've got 174 of them, you're just going to end up like crashing this thing. It's just not a, not a super smart way to do this, but um, yeah. So this should be fairly reusable for other purposes. Uh, it would be very easy to add um, another fastener at the midpoint if you needed it, and then go ahead and make these smaller. Like if you had a much larger model, like that might be something that you, that you're interested in. Um, yeah. So again, look at that, watch these joints, you know, when you actually fabricate it and, uh, yeah. So, okay. So, um, that's the end of this video. Next one, we're going to be talking about how to actually put some kind of design on this and then we'll be pretty close to getting it, uh, fabricated. All right. Take it easy.